Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome back to Our Wyoming Life, where today we actually get to bring you along as we do something that we don't do very often here in Wyoming, and that is plant a tree. We're gonna try to make it a little bit more exciting than that, but uh, that's what we're doing. We're planting trees today on Our Wyoming Life. <laughs> So check this out behind me. This is the Great Plains of the United States. We're actually considered high desert and a very arid environment. We average about 14 inches of precipitation per year. That includes snowfall. I can tell you that this year we have had just under eight inches of actual rain and that has been since April. There's places in the US to get eight inches of rain in a 24 hour period. We're lucky to see an inch in one time if that even happens. I'm not even sure if that happened this year. So behind me, you can see what the terrain looks like. There's not a tree to be seen. There's not a tree for miles heading down this way. What we do see when we when we do see trees out on the prairie, especially in this part of the country, are Russian olive trees. And those trees are actually considered an invasive species now by the state of Wyoming because they send out their roots everywhere trying to gather up as much moisture as they can, pulling moisture away from grasses and all that kind of stuff. So we don't see a whole lot of people planting Russian olives anymore, although they do grow pretty well here. In fact, my father-in-law Gilbert used to carry, and this is probably horrible, I shouldn't say this, but he used to carry uh, Russian olive seeds on the gator with him, and he would actually throw them out as he was driving along when he was younger. So that was before the invasive species and all that kind of stuff came out. But, I mean, obviously, when, when you don't get much rain, uh, you got to take what you can get, and Russian olives grew really well here in northeast Wyoming, and, and uh, up until the, the mid-60s or 70s, or whenever they declared them invasive species, uh, they were pretty much all the trees trees that you saw up here. Another tree that does grow somewhat well here in northeast Wyoming is the plain old cottonwood tree. Now these are Sioux cottonwood and basically what that means is that they don't have their they're cottonless uh, cottonwood trees and that's what we're going to be planting today. If you've ever been around cottonwood trees uh, you see the cotton blowing through the air that's how they they disperse their seeds. Uh, these ones don't do that they don't have the cotton they don't have the white fluff but the cottonwood tree is the official state tree of Wyoming. I know a lot of you guys probably thought it was the uh, the telephone pole, but it's not. It's actually a tree just like this one. And today we're gonna be planting three of these trees right over here in our RV parking area. The feedlot is right over there, a little ways away from us. But this is where we have guests all summer long coming to stay on the ranch uh, through the Harvest Host program, through booking on our website. Uh, this is where they come and stay, and this is where we want to actually plant these trees because we just built this this spring, but we didn't get a chance to plant any trees uh, because we actually missed our optimal time to plant trees here in Northeast Wyoming, and that is in the spring, early spring, and in the fall. And why that is, I'm not exactly sure, but I do believe uh, that I've been told that's when you're supposed to plant trees. So I'm going to take you guys through the process of how we plant a tree here in Northeast Wyoming. This may be different from where you, oh, I can guarantee you, this is going to be different than how you may go about planting a tree wherever you're from. Uh, but we have to make sure that we've got these trees built up as, as strong as we can. So the first thing we have is a mark. Erin actually came through here and marked out where she wanted these three trees over here in the RV park. And over here, we've got a big old auger. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna auger into the ground and create a hole. And I'm gonna over dig that hole so I can knock the sides in and basically loosen up as much soil as I can around the tree itself. The tree is about 10 feet tall, uh, cost us uh, about 80 bucks or so. Uh, we've had them here on the ranch for a few weeks. We're finally getting around to put them in the ground. So we might as well get started. We'll fire up the bobcat. We'll start digging a hole. Before I do that, however, we did have a guest here on the ranch recently. Had a chance to uh, film a video with him. And Jeff managed to follow around and get some behind the scenes footage as well. Check this out. Hey, hey, no, no, hey, no. What? I thought this was uh, this is in BLM land? <laughs> You're a long ways from home, brother. Uh, this is Wyoming. 
Yeah? Not North Carolina. Well, let me tell you what. <laughs> this Honda is reliable enough to ride it all the way out here. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to because gas is getting more expensive. You need one of those electric bikes. <laughs> I know you can it, ride man. that out here. Uh, what hey, are Mike. you doing here, man? <laughs> Dude, I, I was out here. I was in Montana and circled through to Gillette, one of my favorite places in the world, and seeing some of my favorite farmers in the world right awesome. here. Awesome. Well, let's go check it out. Yeah. Heck yeah. Cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Today on the Stony Ridge. Check. <laughs> <laughs> Today on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel, we're off the farm and we're on the ranch with Mike from Our Wyoming Life in Gillette, Wyoming. Everything in here is raised on the ranch. Uh, from the beef to the pork to the chicken, beef jerky, baked goods, honey, vegetables, a little bit of everything. We've got a beef freezer, which is full of all of our beef. Uh, we finish five steers per month or every other month sorry we finish five steers every other month giving back to the community we're extremely lucky to be to do what we do and uh, being able to give some of that back is huge as well well thanks a lot mike i know we'll see you again in a couple years we'll be I'll back be here and you'll probably have all sorts of crazy stuff going on so you probably know him as the stony ridge farmer that's josh here in northeast wyoming hanging out with us uh, for a few hours and we got a chance to shoot a little video together if you would like to see the full video head over to stony ridge farmer his uh his website or his uh, youtube channel the link is down in the descriptions you can check that out uh the video that he was here filming with us all right so now let's go ahead and dig this hole one big hole obviously we went with a super wide auger um, that's to give us the biggest hole that we can the auger there about uh, 20 24 inches I don't know I don't have a tape measure on me but uh, that auger borrowed from our neighbor down the road hashtag everybody needs a Gary okay so we've got our hole here obviously we've got a couple problems with this hole number one it's way too deep uh, we only need to bury our tree in the ground up to where it starts to flare right here on the trunk and that's as deep as we want to go with the berry however our hole a little bit deeper that was done on purpose so that we can actually shave out the sides of this a little bit and break up some of this really hard pack stuff uh, we really packed the crap out of this soil when we when we did all this rv park stuff you can see actually i had trouble getting through the first layer because that first few inches was compacted so tough once i got through that it wasn't that bad but what we're going to do is take a shovel now and kind of knock this down and round it out a little bit What we're going to do is we're going to actually come in from the sides, kind of knock this down, widen out our hole, knock this down and then, oh, see how hard that is? Get our tree out of the container. And what we want to do is knock down this root ball a little bit, kind of break it up so that it's looser when it's in the soil. We have really sandy soil here, 
So, I'm not really too worried about the roots going into the soil. And these aren't really root bound or anything, so that's good. But I do want to just kind of loosen everything up here. We've loosened up a lot of the soil going straight down, which will encourage the roots to do that. Growing down. Okay. Now right, we put this in the hole. We'll see where we're at as far as depth wise. All right, that's tree number one. There we go. Now that's where I want that tree to sit. We've got our hole set where we need it to be. Next thing we're gonna do is actually water this hole in. We're gonna put a ton of water into it and just let it soak down. And I don't actually have water over here. So we filled up a water tank, put it on the back of the gator. We can use that. Okay, we filled up our hole, now we just have to wait for it to soak down. Now with most of our water gone, uh, we're ready to put our plant, our tree back in, and then we're gonna take a look at how we fill it back in with dirt. Still a little bit of water in here, but not much. Now, I'm no expert in planting trees. I totally admit that. But Aaron told me what I'm trying to avoid when I'm putting the dirt back in are any air pockets that might form around the tree itself. So I'm gonna put some dirt in and around. all the way around. And then I'm gonna kind of pack it in. Make sure there's no air pockets around the tree. thing is I don't have any grass over here to compete with so I'll just kind of push it back in now that we have our tree planted we'll actually water it in really well we are not gonna stake this tree. Uh, the general rule is that if you can pick up a tree, move it around, you probably don't need to stake it down. And that's when you put out the guy wires and make sure everything's going straight as possible. One of the reasons we don't do that is because we want this thing to uh, be as strong as possible from the very get-go. So it's gonna be in charge of supporting itself. We're not gonna lend any hand with that. This thing's gonna have to fight wind, it's gonna have to fight snow and it has to learn sometime. Also, you notice when we did the soil, we didn't add any soil amendments. Um, that's because we want it to be used to exactly what we have here as far as soil, the nutrients, and all that kind of good stuff. So we're not adding any potting soil, we're not doing anything except for water. Right now, we're gonna dump a bunch of water in it and uh, let it sit. one heck of a way to water things. 
Also, the other problem that we're gonna have is gonna be with deer, but first we have to get these other two trees up here in the RV park. We'll get those set up, then we'll come back, we'll talk about how we're gonna fence the deer out of these things. Our RV park uh, this year turned out to be a great success. Uh, we hosted over a hundred RVs here over the summer. Uh, probably more than that, actually. I really didn't sit down and count, but I know that we had plenty of nights when this thing was full. We have four, five spots, actually, uh, and four spots here in the RV park and one auxiliary spot just in case we need it. So it's been a lot of fun uh, this summer getting to know everybody, and thank you if you did happen to stay here on the ranch and you're still watching. Thank you very much. Really do appreciate it. Okay, more trees to put in. We're going to knock these ones out really quick, and then we'll come back. We'll talk about fencing. So, there's a tree, and there's a tree, and right there is a tree. So, people often ask me, what's the biggest predator on the ranch? And you'd think it'd be coyotes or mountain lion or whatever. But honestly, when we really have to think about the pure volume uh, and the most damage that can be done over the longest period of time, it's probably just deer. Uh, if they get into the garden, they can decimate the garden in just a matter of days. That's why you saw us put up that eight foot tall garden fence. Over here on this side, we do worry about the deer coming and, and eating the new cottonwoods that are in here. And in order to keep them out, we're gonna fence them out, but we're gonna do it in kind of a weird way. And it's actually, it's more of a spread fence than anything. We are gonna fence out a pretty big area with each tree. So deer have great big long necks, right? So we want to make sure that they can't get anywhere near this tree. So we're actually going to fence five foot out all the way around. The easiest way to do that is actually measure 10 foot across with the tape measure. And I'm going to put one post at 10 and one post at zero. Once all the posts are in, on goes the fence.
And then because this is just a temporary fence, what I'm actually gonna do is cut out the stays. I don't need to attach this to every single post. If I cut out the stays on this fence, I can actually just wrap it around itself. And actually this fence recycled from the orchard where it did basically the same thing. Those trees uh, that these came off of actually died in the orchard. So we're just recycling this fence for that purpose. And then we'll just take the what's left over here, pull it tight, and just wrap it around. This should keep this fence together. And also make it temporary so we can reuse it someplace else. Now I just have to do that another couple times and we'll be all done. I gotta tell you though, I learned a lot today about planting trees. I actually had to have a refresher course because Erin and I planted one of these in our yard this morning and it was then that she took me through the step-by-step -step on how to do this and how to do it correctly because she knew I'd be doing it over here and sharing it with you guys. So obviously big thing is the soil prep, making sure you've got enough loose soil around your tree, burying it at the correct depth where your flare is still out of the ground, making sure you're not amending the soil. No tie downs needed if you can pick up and move the tree. And if you do tie down a tree, you should really only have those supports on there for about a year. Then you need to get them off so that that tree learns how to stand on its own. Fencing, just as important as soil and everything else. And of course, water, the big thing that these trees are gonna need over the next few years. We're gonna be supplying water to them. That means we're gonna be hauling water out here because there is no water source very close by. So about five gallons a week is about all these trees will need and we'll do that to keep them going. I've got more to do. Like I said, you guys look exhausted though, especially after all that pounding. So I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm gonna go finish this one up and move on to the next thing. Frost is coming, so we're getting ready for that. And if you noticed my new hat, this is the cut bank from Gone Country Hats. Head on over to owl-hats.com to get your own. Probably the best hat that I've ever owned, especially when we don't have any trees. I gotta do something for shade out here. Thanks guys for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to follow along. Hit that little subscribe button so that you can explore the ranch life and escape your ordinary. God, who's tired? Ain't me. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.